Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Just ahead of 6 o'clock, 6.30 I should say on this uh, Wednesday, a suspected kidnapping comes to an end at a Southwest Montana truck stop. We have the details. According to vape shops like this one in Bozeman, an injunction is soon on the way to trying to stop the temporary ban. Good morning to you and welcome to your Wednesday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman. Matt Elwell has our forecast here in just a moment. It is 6.30 and a top story for you now. Police are investigating a possible kidnapping case in Rocker, just west of Butte. Yeah, Monday night at 10 o'clock, a woman was at the Flying J truck stop claiming she had just escaped from a man who had offered her a ride just two days earlier in her hometown of Ventura, California. She claimed the man wouldn't let her leave his van as he drove to Montana. It was only when he stopped to get gas at the Rocker truck stop that she ran from the vehicle and got help from a customer in the parking lot. We did respond out there. By the time we got out there, the blue van was gone. Uh, the male uh, was asking for information on how to get to, uh, to Bozeman, so he may have traveled that way. So we uh, put an attempt to locate it on a blue van. Uh, it had a broken window, uh, a rear window, and it has 13 county plates. Now we are told the suspect is a white male, about five foot six inches tall, 145 pounds, balding with gray beard. Anyone with information is asked to call Butte Law Enforcement at that number on your screen, 406-497-1120. Matt joins us now. Yesterday was fantastic, and you said today's going to be even better. Uh, very well could be. Temperatures are likely to build up into the upper 60s to mm. near 70 degrees for a few areas. Wow. The morning actually very mild as well. 34 degrees in Belgrade and Butte, 43 in Dillon, 25 in West Yellowstone. We're sitting at 56 degrees this morning in Livingston. Clouds will be clearing out as you head into the afternoon, but fear not, there'll be more clouds on the way as we have another system heading back this direction, especially as you head into your Thursday. Look at those temperatures well above average for both Bozeman and Butte for the afternoon. Temperatures do cool down as we get toward the weekend. We're going to break it all down for you coming up. Thank you for that, Matt. Our top story for you out of the state. A Helena Elementary School was evacuated yesterday after officials found what they thought was a possible explosive device. But law enforcement now says it doesn't appear the item was dangerous. MTN's Jonathan Amberian explains what happened. By Tuesday afternoon, things were back to normal at Helena's Rossiter Elementary School. For much of the morning, law enforcement had been on scene investigating what was then believed to be an improvised explosive device found on the school playground. But at an afternoon news conference, Lewis and Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton said it appears the item was not an explosive. School officials found it around 8.20 Tuesday morning. They closed off the area around the item, contacted law enforcement, and evacuated students to the nearby Little Red Schoolhouse. Dutton said officers on the ground found a plastic bottle. Until trained bomb experts were able to safely examine it, he said they had to treat it as though it might be an explosive. The pop bottle had black tape around it. It was filled with nuts, bolts, and washers, and had a liquid in it. For the most untrained eye, including mine, would probably guess that that quite possibly was a, an explosive device. Investigators say the bottle came from a construction site, and they believe it was moved by a homeless individual. Dutton said it was not a hoax, and there was no malicious intent. He said the sheriff's office was releasing the information they had from their investigators as they got it. Our purpose was to let people know, one, there was no one injured. Then it was told that it did explode. Still, there was no one injured. The kids were safe. That's what I needed to get out to the public. That's why we reported the information we had. While this turned out not to be an explosive, Dutton said the school reacted correctly, and his office treats every case like this seriously. We will take it on face value every time and treat it accordingly that it is some kind of exploding device. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. Now, Sheriff Dutton does say investigators are con still conducting more tests on that bottle, but they don't expect to find anything dangerous. And Montana's ban on vape and e-cigarette sales goes into effect one week from yesterday. MTN's Cody Boyer has the latest on the effort to stop that ban. I don't know anybody who can survive without an income for four months. One week from today, the state will temporarily ban all e-cigarette and vape sales. Not if the owners of Freedom Vapes can help it. When is the injunction expected to happen? It'll happen within probably the next 24 hours. The marshals say the injunction will be put before the state district court judge, who could decide to halt the ban again temporarily. There are shops across Montana already saying that they are going to... Uh, 
just go ahead and close up. Montana's going to be a big fat loser in this. According to the marshals, this injunction includes around 20 other vape shops across the state. If it fails their fear, folks will step back to unhealthy practices. Throwing them under the bus, you're going to force them back to combustible cigarettes again. The Montana Smoke Free Association is enlisting the help of three attorneys, including federal attorney Greg Troutman. I caught up with him from his office in Louisville, Kentucky. The Department of Health promulgated this emergency rule under a statute that is very clear in its, its uh, uh, language that is to be used very sparingly. This is not an emergency situation. At any rate, the marshals hope the injunction buys time. If they get away with this once, who's next? In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Now we're told uh, out of the more than 1,000 cases of vaping associated illnesses related to e-cigarettes in the country, two of them were here in Montana, including Gallatin County. And a U.S. District Court judge deals another setback to efforts to develop a new mine in the Cabinet Mountains in far northwest Montana. Judge rejected the government's motion to resolve the case with a summary judgment. The mine, which would be located on the southwestern corner of the Cabinet Mountains, would be developed by Hecla Mining Subsidiary RC Resources. Last year, the government gave Hecla Mining Subsidiary RC Resources permission to do further exploration of the extensive copper and silver deposits in the Rock Creek watershed. But the proposal has raised concerns about its impact on water quality and wildlife habitat, especially for the limited number of grizzly bears in that range. And the city of Butte is going to have to shell out some extra money if it wants the courthouse employees to stay warm this winter. Yeah, one of the nearly 20-year-old boilers in the basement of the courthouse will have to be replaced after a crack was discovered. The city estimates it will cost more than $100,000 to replace that unit, which heats the courthouse and the law enforcement building. It's one of the bigger expenses, yes. This is one we don't want to incur too many in, in one year for sure. Now, once the council approves a bid, it could take more than two weeks to get a new boiler installed. Staying, wow. in, staying in view for about uh, 400 people are currently there attending a large business summit. The Innovate Montana Symposium, which is hosted by the governor's office, was held at the Copper King Ballroom and featured business leaders from around the country. They were there to help business owners in Montana improve locally and expand their businesses on the national level as well. We're really excited about the caliber of people that are here and speaking to our audience. Um, it's it's going to be a phenomenal event. We're really pleased with the number and, and type of companies that have come out to hear these, um, these people talk as well. By the way, that event continues through today. That's pretty cool. Yep. Fun gathering there. And the Downtown Bozeman Association invites all kids and all families to join local businesses for an evening, or I should say maybe an afternoon, of trick-or-treating on Main Street. Yep. Downtown businesses will be passing out candy to trick-or-treaters from 4 to 6 p.m. on Halloween. The event is absolutely free and open to the public, and the Downtown Bozeman Association says it is a fun and safe way to enjoy the holiday. We have um, volunteers and Bozeman Police Department um, officers at the intersections. We put up added pedestrian safety signs. We also um, really try to tout no driving through um, Main Street during this time. We now this will be the 14th annual trick-or-treating in downtown Main Street. It is quite a time. Great costumes say, up I, and down the street. I worked at Tarantino's Pizza for three years and I was always the designated candy, candy sheller outer. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, <laughs> yeah, you're shocked. <laughs> but it is maybe one of the most fun things just to witness. A, a it sea is of creatures. A it's sea awesome. of creatures, it's no awesome. doubt about it. <laughs> 638, we're going to head a little further out on yes, this one. Yes. A former NASA scientist claims we've known about the possibility of life on Mars for decades. That's right. Gilbert Levin recently published an article about tests on Mars conducted about 40 years ago. He says the Viking landers were able to detect organic matter in the soil on the red planet. But NASA couldn't duplicate the results in a lab, so it dismissed the findings as a false positive. NASA didn't run any more similar tests until 2018. Levin says the Curiosity rover found signs of organic matter again. Just last week, it detected sediment that could be from ancient salty lakes. Cool. Wow. Cool. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. It is time for a quick break. When we return, smartphones. What's new, what's hip, what's working, and what's not exactly working. That's all when we come back. Good morning to you ahead and only on CBS This Morning. The parents of a British teenager killed by an American in a traffic accident 
tell us why they felt ambushed during their meeting with President Trump. Plus, CBS News investigates hormone therapy clinics, how treatment advertised as a fountain of youth could be harmful, and why one patient calls it just a scam. And actor Paul Rudd is here in Studio 57 today. We'll see you 7 o'clock on the dot.